Today's episode is called, Steve's Old Buddy. The arrival of an old Air Force buddy, in danger Steve Elliott's status with the Bradley sisters. Irving Berlin's It's a Lovely Day Today, sung by Billy Joe, played by Meredith McRae. Original air date, April 4, 1967. Staying, we're behind schedule. I see. I just run up here because we had something for you. I says, Charlie, it don't matter if we are behind schedule. I got to deliver this to Kate Bradley. Oh, that's very nice of you. Charlie was in on it, too. He says, right, you deliver that to Kate. I amend my statement. It's very nice of both of you. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. Just time to give reliable service, that's all. I like to be known as reliable Floyd Smoot. Well, that's the way I think of it. And Charlie likes to be known as reliable Charlie Pratt. I swear I think of him. See, that's nice. It sure is good to be appreciated. Oh, I do. I appreciate you. Well, gee, thanks. I'll tell Charlie. See ya. The reliable Floyd. Yeah? Uh, what was it you came up here to deliver? Oh, no, it was this. Special delivery. Oh, thanks. Doggone it. I almost wasn't reliable. A uh, reliable Floyd? Yes, ma'am. Uh, this letter isn't for me. It's for Steve Elliott. Well, this keeps up. I'm going to hurt my reliable Floyd image. But I'll see that he gets it. Thank you. Bye, reliable Floyd. I didn't have the heart to tell him there was two cents postage due on it. <laughs> And with my leave coming up, I thought I'd head for Hooterville and check you out. He's coming here. Oh, you'll love this guy, Mrs. Bradley. Old Jeff was my best buddy and co-pilot in the Air Force. <laughs> It'll be great to get together and kick around old times. Like the time we had in Honolulu when you and I had the three-day pass and... so on and so on and so on. He doesn't ride too plain, does he? Hmm? Well, I mean, after that part about the three-day pass to Honolulu, you had a little trouble reading his words. Oh, well, nothing. Just some uh, silly talk about the places we went, uh, uh, historical monuments and uh, the library and uh, the why. Isn't it too bad you didn't see any of those pretty hula girls in the grass skirt? Well, you read right through the paper. <laughs> Say, how would you like to get out of Drucker's meeting with me? I'd love to. As soon as I finish my salad. There you are, Henrietta. Thank you, Mr. Drucker. Hi, Henrietta. Hi, Mrs. Bradley. Oh, oh. Steady. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All I did was catch her. Well, Henrietta has a very low threshold of excitement. Pim, <laughs> uh, we're here to meet one of Steve's friends. But I brought an order so you can fill it while we wait, huh? Sure thing. Only it's apt to be a little longer than you think. Andy Parker phoned that his jitney had a blowout. Another one? You know he's going to have to stop putting patches on the patches? <laughs> yeah. No wonder he's an auto club dropout. Anyway, it'll be a good hour before he gets here. An hour? Well, I've still got a crop testing job over in Stanwood. Well, why don't you go ahead and I'll wait for him. We're going to make him feel right at home. Okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Would you like some more punch, Captain? Oh, 
please call me Jeff. Okay. More punch, Jeff. Thank you. Well, how about some cookies? Oh, me? You bet. Uh -huh. You may smoke. I'm a little busy. <laughs> There's Steve. Yeah, I know. How can you tell? Same old habit, dip in the left wing. Well, maybe he was signaling for a turn. Yeah, I didn't mean to strike a nerve. You know, we're all pretty fond of Steve. Oh, don't think that I'm not, too. Especially now that I've met the new team he's got behind him. <laughs> tell us more about your experience with the Thunderbirds. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Okay. Thanks. Now, like I say, we always fly wingtip to wingtip. Hi. Took longer than I thought. Jeff get here? Uh-huh, Jeff, but... Gee, it's too bad I couldn't have entered to be on the welcoming committee. Well, he seems to be bearing up all right. Steve? He's a very nice fellow. Oh, everybody likes Jeff. asking you to come. Yeah, and what did they say? Uh, the fishing is fantastic, the hunting is terrific, the food is out of this world, and the climate's perfect. But, uh, not one word about the good things in life. <laughs> <laughs> singing professionally? You're going to get me in the movies and on TV? <laughs> well, I've heard a lot worse. Well, with your voice and your looks and your... You've got everything going for you. <laughs> I've heard a lot of gals singing. Hey, hi, Steve. Have you ever heard Billy Joe sing? Mm, lots of times. She's really got it. She's pretty good, all right. Pretty good. She makes most of those girls on TV sound like they're calling hogs. Oh, yeah. It's not only the voice, it's the package it comes in. <laughs> well, Jeff, there's some uh, coffee and donuts out in the kitchen. I'm not very hungry. Yes, you are. No, I had a big breakfast. You are hungry for coffee and donuts in the kitchen. Well, how about that? I'm hungry for coffee and donuts out in the kitchen. Uh, you care to join us? Oh, no, thanks. Got to wash the package. <laughs> Gorgeous. I never realized you were such a connoisseur of girl singers. Well, not just singers, girls in general. And believe me, that Billy Joe is, uh... Yeah, she, uh, she is all right. That says it all. Jet? Yeah? I, uh, think there's something you ought to know. Billy Joe is staked out. You mean one of the farm boys around here recognizes a good thing when he sees it? That's right, by cracky. <laughs> you? I'm sorry. Well, I realize in the Air Force we had the buddy system, a share and share of life, but... Oh, forget it. I admire your taste. Besides, there's two more warming up in the bullpen. <laughs> well, hello there. Hi, Jeff. Homework? No, I was just looking over this book of poems. That's right. 
Mother told me he had one of your poems published. Must have been quite a thrill. About the most exciting thing that ever happened to me. Uh, whose poems are these? Oh, various poets. Right now I'm reading the poems of William Colin Bryant. So live, that when the summons comes to join the innumerable caravans, which moves to that mysterious realm, where each shall take his chamber in the silent halls of death. Thanatopsis. Thou go not, like the quarry slave at night, scourged to his dungeon, but sustained and soothed by an unfaltering trust, approach thy grave, like one who wraps the drapery of his couch about him, lies down to pleasant dreams. That's terrific. In fact, it's more than that. It's amazing. I think it's sickening. That's because you don't understand beautiful poetry. A girl admires that kind of thing in a man. Uh, stick around, old pal. I'll teach you to recite Hickory Dickory Dock. So, yeah, it turns them on every time. Okay, Tennyson. Well, how about coming down and help me fix a sticky carburetor? Yeah, well, right now I'd rather... You'd so rather go down, down and, and help you fix it. Thanks. You're a brick for volunteering. Oh, uh, look, well, when I get back, we'll rhyme a few couplets, okay? Groovy. <laughs> Jeff, there's something I uh, think you ought to know. Uh, Bobby Joe's staked out, too. No, oh, I wouldn't say that she is. Well, good. There's something really beautiful and talented. I agree. Glad to see you still got 20-20 vision. But Jeff, I, uh, well, I don't know if she's quite for you. Oh, you mean because she's beautiful and talented? She's not my type? No, not at all. It's, well, you're a city fellow. She's strictly rural. Well, you know, like a farm girl. All three of them are farm girls. But you know something? I haven't seen a crop failure in the bunch. <laughs> you know what I mean. Well, of course. You mean to say if I was Clem Cadiddlehopper, I'd do better? No, it's not that. You know, Steve, I'm having a hard time following your flight pattern. Why don't you just clue me in? All right. I don't feel Bobby Joe is your type. Oh, you feel she's not my type. What I feel doesn't matter, huh? Well, I can see that I'm not getting through to you at all. Yeah, well, I've got problems. Tell you what. I'll just lie down here, and you can analyze me. Hi, Betty Joe. Hi, Uncle Joe. What's known at you? I struck out three times in the game today, and this is my last season, too. I thought you was batting over 300. Well, I was till I got in this swamp. No, I couldn't hit them if they were throwing watermelons at me. <laughs> well, I wouldn't worry about it. All us great ball players had our hitting slumps. I remember one time I was up against Matthews. Christy Matthewson? No, Fred Matthewson. That don't mean he couldn't burn him in. Instead of using a glove, the catcher caught the ball in a bucket, like a hot rivet. <laughs> no, sir. We... Hi, sir. Hi. Stop. Hi, fellas. Joe? Hi, boy. Uncle Joe was just telling me about a baseball game he played in. Come on, Uncle Joe. Oh, I don't think these fellas would want to hear about that. Well, sure we would. Well, let's hear it. Well, I was up to bat, and this Matthewson guy was pitching. Christy Matthewson? Ralph. Fred. That's right. We was loaded with Matthewsons in those parts. But it was the last of the ninth inning, and the score was tied. And he burns one over, and I takes a hefty cut at it. And the last anyone saw that ball, it disappeared over the county courthouse. It must have really traveled. Well, for months after that, there was rumors going around that it was sending out signals like a satellite. <laughs> Looks like you're a baseball fan, too. I love it. Well, it's my favorite sport. Uh, I'm going to go wash up. Okay. Why aren't you coming? Uh, sure, sure, in a minute. <laughs> I guess you think going out for baseball at my age isn't too feminine. Well, I wouldn't say that. What position do you play? Shortstop. Well, you have to be real graceful to play that position. You ever see a big league shortstop? No, I hope to someday. Well, now when he catches that ball, starts to make that double play, Steps on the base, jumps over the sliding runner, and fires that ball at first. Well, that's what you call a ballet with spikes. Well, maybe you can give me some pointers tomorrow. Oh, I'd love to. It's funny, but I never thought of tying in ballet and dancing with playing the infield. Now, when you're going after those grounders, it's nothing more than doing the soft shoe shuffle with the baseball glove. Here, let me show you. Now, you get down, you always keep your eye on the ball. Back and forth. Get that rhythm, huh? Good. <laughs> It's like a soft shoe. Uh, dump, dump, ba dump, ba dump, dump, ba dump, 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 d
Dagger. <laughs> Steve's friend. He said the most wonderful thing to me. What? He said, making a double play is like a ballet with spikes. That's an original approach, I will say that. <laughs> Paul, mm -hmm. do you think I'm too young for an Air Force captain? No, I just think you're a little too premature. You barely know him. <laughs> it could be funny, though. What? His letter to his commanding officer. Dear sir, request that my leave be extended as I have just become engaged to a shortstop. <laughs> and now, back to Petticoat Junction. What gives with you anyway, Steve? First to slay off with Billy Joe, then Bobby Joe, and now Betty Joe. Uh, can I ask you a question? What? Do you mind if I pet the dog? Come in. Hi, boys. I uh, brought you some fresh towels and washcloths. Thank, Thank you, Miss Bradley. Uh, anything else you need? A referee. <laughs> Come on, Jeff. This is nothing we can't handle ourselves. I hope so. Because when it comes to refereeing, my specialty is girls. <laughs> Well, do you have to involve the whole family? Well, so far, the whole family is involved. All except Joe and Mrs. Bradley. And the dog you won't let me pet. Go pet the dog. <laughs> With my blessing. Uh, Steve, will you kindly tell me your objection to me paying a little attention to Betty Joe? It's pretty obvious. You're robbing the cradle. Robin. Huh. If that's robbing the cradle, I ought to be six years old again. <laughs> Boy, what a flop this reunion has been. We had some great plans. Hunting, fishing, the Friday night dance. Don't worry about the dance. I'll get you a date. Well, thanks. Hope the dog looks good in a formal. <laughs> oh, howdy, Steve. Hi, Sam. I'm going to borrow your phone if you don't mind. It's all yours. Thank you. Uh, Sarah, this is Steve Elliott. Would you get me the Plout residence? Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Plout, is Henrietta there? This is Steve Elliott. Uh, Mrs. Plout, is that, is that you squealing? <laughs> Will you get a hold of yourself? <laughs> yes, this is Steve Elliott, and, and yes, it's about a date. <laughs> She's gone into orbit. <laughs> well, if Selma gets that way, you just have to catch her if she swings by. <laughs> Mrs. Plowd, if you just put Henrietta on the line. Oh. Well, this is Henrietta. What, what's that? Yes, this is really Steve Elliott. Fire <laughs> too. Maybe I can handle it for you. What's the date for? Uh, the dance Friday night. Henrietta, it's about a dance Friday night. Now, uh, uh, stop. <laughs> stop it, Henrietta. This is just me, Sam Drucker. Henrietta and her mother are two of a kind. Once they get carried away, they squeal at anything. They don't talk soprano. <laughs> Henrietta, I want you to go to the dance with my best buddy if you're interested to be at the Shady Rest Friday night at 8. That's the most consecutive words I ever heard anyone get in on a plout funeral. <laughs> Your mother wants to know something about him before you accept. Well, uh, he's an Air Force captain. Now they're both squealing. Well, hang up. I think you made your point. Now it's got me beat. Me too. There sure is something wrong someplace. It seemed to me the most important thing in the world as far as he was concerned was me and my poetry. He certainly was interested in my singing. Well, he and I had more in common than both of you put together. Baseball. And all of a sudden it was like somebody turned him off. Like a light. One minute we were talking baseball and dancing, and the next minute he was going up the stairs with Steve. After that, instant blackout. What's the matter, Billy Joe? I was just thinking. Steve came around while Jeff was admiring my singing, too. And then after that, nothing. Why, that's what happened when Jeff and I were reading poetry. Steve came around and... 
Why, that... that big old crop duster. Girls, <laughs> we've got to do something about him. Boy, how we've got to do something about him. <laughs> Where have you been? Oh, I'll keep my promise. I, uh, got you a date, old buddy. Yeah, something special? <laughs> yeah, I'd have to say that, uh, in her own way, she's pretty special. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Don't mention it. Uh, Steve? Yeah. I really mean it. Well, sure. You know, for a while, I was a little hot there. But I guess I should have known my old pal would have come through. I always do. Thanks again. Exactly cheerful, Charlie. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Bradley. It's just that I can't figure me out. Well, maybe I could help. I used to be pretty good at equations. <laughs> well, it's Jeff. Or me, or or both of us. Or uh, I... ju ju just the facts, man. <laughs> well, first Jeff makes a play for Billy Joe, and I wave him off because, well. I understand. Well, then he makes a play for Bobby Joe, and I flag him down again. Two down, one to go, huh? Right. So he goes for Betty Joe, and guess what happens? Don't tell me. Off limits. And this is my best buddy. What's wrong with me? You, uh, <clears throat> want it straight between the eyes? You've just had a large attack of childishness. Huh? Well, you said you wanted it straight. Oh, well, yeah, but... Did you ever see a kid with a room full of toys? As soon as anyone comes in and wants to play with one of them, that one becomes his favorite toy. The one that he can't bear to part with. I get it. I'm uh, the kid with the room full of toys, huh? Well, let's face it, up till now, you haven't exactly been swamped by competition. Yeah. I've been spoiled, all right. I wonder what I better do. Nothing. Things have a way of working out. And somehow I've got the feeling that this won't be any exception. Yeah. Well, this is the switch. The girl's ready for the dance before the boys. How do we look, Mom? Gorgeous. <laughs> Steve, we have a date for you. Come in now. Okay, you guys win. <laughs> and don't forget now, I get the lead. <laughs> you blew another one, Steve. He can't dance backwards. <laughs> well, we can't linger here all night. All right, date? All in. Count off. One, two, three. Good. All present and accounted for. Oh, hey, enough's enough now. What about me? Oh, Steve, you have a day. I do? Well, you mean that uh, you and, uh, and, well, then, uh, who, uh, oh, no. Who else? There's been a change of plans, and my fondest wishes come true. Uh, Henrietta, you look lovely. Oh, Stevie, this is going to be the most memorable evening of my life. Yeah. You ain't my type. <laughs> 